What's up? I'm Fuse PS. This is Fuse PS Says. I look like an American today. I'm sorry about that, but we're going to do a really cool video about how to do best practices with 3D printing and working with real world objects inside of a digital space. So for this video, I'm going to make a really simple thing. I'm going to make a vertical stand for this hard drive. I use it on multiple laptops. I know, I know, I use multiple machines, tech nerd, whatever. Um, but I want to create a stand so when it's on my desk, it's neat and tidy and not just kind of loose but then something I can pull it out of. So a little bit like a dock, but not really. Uh, I'm gonna have it so that this side of it is facing upwards. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my calipers. Now, if you don't own a pair of calipers, I highly recommend that you purchase a pair. Doesn't matter what you're working on, you definitely need a pair of these in your life. So I only need two dimensions. I need the width and the depth here. So this is 85 by 20. So inside of Fusion, you can see here I've already started a sketch, but if you're not familiar with how to do that, I'll just do it again. Let's get rid of that one. I'm gonna go sketch, create sketch, and pick my ground plane. Now I'm gonna create a, a rectangle, and I'm gonna use a two-point rectangle, and I'm gonna start here at the origin, and I'm just gonna draw something out. I'm not gonna pay any attention to the dimensions right now. And now I'm gonna add the dimensions in. So I'm gonna to go to sketch, sketch dimension, and grab that bottom one. I'm gonna set that to 85. And this one is 20. Now the corners on this are rounded. And uh, I don't have a radial tool, but it, you can see when you look at it straight on that it is pretty much a semicircle here. So I'm gonna radial, I'm gonna fill it this after the fact. I'm not actually gonna do it in the 2D. But this, uh, this little drawing here is enough for me to know that this is the exact and this is what I gotta work off of. Now when I'm 3D printing, 3D printers have tolerances built into them. They can sometimes make your stuff slightly larger or they can make it slightly smaller. So you need to factor that in. Not everybody knows that, but now you do. So when you're doing that, in this case, all I'm gonna do is just make this a little bit bigger. If I made it dead onto that thickness, then I'm gonna have a tough time getting this in there. It's probably not gonna fit properly anyway. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of um, a wiggle room. So I'm gonna go sketch, and then over to offset. And I'm gonna give this one and a half millimeters. So I'll just punch 1.5 in, hit okay. And you can now see I've got this 1.5 here. I'm gonna offset one more time from here to create a base for this to sit on. So I'm gonna set this one to 20. And that looks a little bit too big. So let's go with 10. That looks pretty good. And then lastly, I need to set a thickness out from here to the actual thickness of the stand itself. So I'm gonna do another offset, click this, and then set that to three millimeters. Can't pick that one actually, because that is related via an offset constraint to this initial rectangle. So I've got to pick another one. So if that does happen to you in Fusion, you know why. So click here, set that to three, and I'm gonna go plus 1.5, because I've done an initial offset of 1.5 from that internal dimension. Now I could just do the maths in my head, but Fusion can do it for me. So I'm gonna put three and then plus 1.5. Keeping things super simple here, and now I'm gonna hit stop sketch. Now when I hit the home button, you'll see I've just got a, ba a bunch of basic stuff to work off of. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to create and then extrude, and I'm just gonna drag a window like this. If you're not familiar with this, a left to right drag creates um, a orange box. This orange box is only gonna select whatever fits inside of it. So if I do that for an extrude, it's not gonna pick anything. A right to left box, which is yellow with a blue dashed line on the outside, is gonna select everything that fits inside of it. So I'm gonna do that over here. And I'm actually gonna go in a negative direction and go minus uh, three millimeters. Hit okay. And in case that's difficult to see, we'll change the visual style to visible edges only. And you'll see that the sketch has disappeared. Now, again, if you're new to Fusion, the sketches are automatically hidden 
when you create a three-dimensional extrusion or any kind of three-dimensional shape from them, whether it's a revolve, extrusion, sweep, whatever. Um, so they're not gone, but if I just open up the sketches folder here, you'll see the sketch number two switched off. So I'm gonna just turn that back on, and then I'm gonna hit create and then extrude again, and I'm gonna extrude this up, and I'm gonna go with 25 millimeters. Now remember earlier I said that this is rounded, but my model isn't yet? Well, personally, I prefer to do my fillets in the 3D space. It helps me see them a little bit better, and I feel a little bit more comfortable working with them that way. So what I'm gonna do now is hit fillet, and I'm gonna pick this corner, this corner. Let's just rotate it around. This corner, and then lastly, this corner. Now, this is 20 millimeters deep, and this looks like a full semicircle, so that would mean that the radius across this is 10. Now, if I put 10 in here, you'll see that it's not gonna be absolute because this is wider. That's not a problem. That's gonna give me that wiggle room I want, so I'm just gonna hit okay. Now that we're gonna talk about the best practices for 3D printing really quickly. Now, this is just the first tip. I'm gonna put more videos out where I'm gonna put more tips for 3D printing out there too, but you'll notice here, this has got a, a, a perpendicular angle. So it's 90 degrees between the flat and the vertical. Now, if I 3D print this out, that's gonna be a weak point. That is the most likely place that this thing would break. Because when you 3D print, particularly, and, and this is um, specific to FDM, so any kind of desktop printer that uses something like PLA or ABS, when you're printing in layers, those layers are very strong in the perpendicular. So if I print an object with the layers being stacked this way, then when I press down on that object, that's very strong that way. But when you come at it from the side, that's where it's weak. Now with an object like this, chances are I'm gonna be wiggling out of the object, uh, of the stand, and that would be the place that it would break. So to counteract that, what I can do is go to modify and then chamfer and I'm gonna pick these edges. And I'm gonna put a five millimeter chamfer on them. Now, that doesn't look particularly attractive. I don't like the look of that. I'm gonna change that to four millimeters. So I've got a bit of room here that I'm gonna put a fillet on later. But I'm gonna change my chamfer type from equal distance to two distances. Now this allows me to change the chamfer type. So this by default is a uniform chamfer, meaning that it creates a 45 degree angle. That's perfectly fine for these needs, it would suit us great. I don't think it looks particularly good though. So I'm gonna grab the vertical and I'm just gonna make that a little bit steeper. And I think that looks a little bit better. It's not amazing, but it's just a little stand for my desk. Um, it's not the end of the world if it's a bit ugly. I'm gonna hit fill it. Probably shouldn't say that as a designer, but I have. Um, and I'm gonna fillet these corners off as well now. Whoops. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Bring that back over here. And I'm gonna give those a four millimeter fillet. All right, that's starting to look a little bit better. Um, let's try a five. Oops, I hit enter too quickly. And again, if you're new to Fusion, not the end of the world, just double click here in the timeline on the last function, and I can change that to five. All right, that's looking a bit better. I'm gonna add a final fillet now, and this time I'm just gonna drag a window over everything and set that to one. And you see that just kind of rounds everything off. But the one thing I don't want to round off is the bottom surface there because that's what's going to be connected to the 3D printer itself. All right, now there we go. I've got a nice basic little dock for my, for my hard drive that I can put on my desk. I'm going to hit OK here. And then I'm going to go to Make 3D Print. And I'm going to, send it, I'm going to turn that off for now. Pick the object, hit OK and I'm gonna dump that on my desktop. And let's call that hard drive dock. 
that's it for this video. I said this is going to be super simple. I just wanted to let you know how it is that you can work with uh, real world objects and bring them into CAD. The answer is paracalipers. You could use Remake. We'll talk about Remake another time. That's to use a 3D scanning method. But for a total beginner, this is a nice, easy way of getting in. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, leave some comments. I love requests for videos. If you want me to do a video, send me a note, uh, send me a message, drop a comment, and I'll put it on my to-do list to make a video about that. Now, um, I'm going to send this to 3D Print, so I'll make a part two video later in the week, probably next week or sometime. But I hope that's been um, a nice, useful, quick tip for you. So thanks very much.